Hello and welcome to Sheffi Live. I'm Bailo Jello and you are watching African Voices, a show where we tend to discuss the issues facing Africans in this country and abroad. And on today's show, we are discussing about Zimbabwe. As many of you will know, Zimbabwe recently had its presidential election back in July, and it's just two months since the new administration of President Nangagwa took over. And uh, as we talk, the country's economy, according to many reports, it is collapsing. There is no foreign cash, and people were queuing or are queuing still for fuel shortages in the country. And recently as well, there has been cholera outbreak in the country. So to discuss this today, I've got here uh, Dr. Kulule Kusibanda, whom some of you will know. He was here prior to his uh, travel to Zimbabwe uh, to be the presidential spokesman of the MDC president, Nelson Chamisa. So I've got him here for us to discuss the current economical crisis in Zimbabwe. So welcome back, uh, Dr. Kulule Kusibanda. Thank you for having me. Right, so uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, Zimbabwe is currently going through an economic uphill battle. So you've just come from Zimbabwe just a couple of days ago. Give us an update on what is happening in the country right now. Well, um, uh, what, what is happening is that immediately after the the election that was held on the 30th of July. You've had um, a, a total collapse of the economy, um, and uh, uh, the, the, the country doesn't have its, that doesn't have cash, there is no fuel, um, there, is, there are no basic commodities. Uh, in fact, the president gave, uh, President Chamisa gave uh, a full speech um, uh, today uh, about the crisis and how he thinks it must be solved. But the bottom line is is that the country is on a downward spiral and that um, uh, it is doing so at a rate faster than has ever been experienced in the country before. You see, the country has been in this situation in 2008, uh, but that took about six, seven years in the making. What has happened here is that uh, the country has lost almost half its economy in just th lost half its economy just three days. Within a week, the value of the economy was almost wiped out to its bare basics, where all that the country has uh, as, as a way of value were the fixed assets that uh, you have, your roads, uh, those that work, um, uh, your, your, your infrastructure. That's the value of uh, the economy. Otherwise, everything else wasn't working. Shops were closing down. Uh, it's a country with 95% unemployment. So that was climbing up to about 99%. So in your opinion, why is this happening? Because uh, I can remember during the election campaign, uh, President Nangagwa promised the country to be, he will make Zimbabwe a 21st century economy where everyone is welcome to come and invest, where there will be employment, there will be enough food. But like you mentioned at the beginning, this has happened before during the, the reign of President Mugabe, but that could be argued that was due to sanction. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, why this one now when there is a new president and the election just gone. Look, we need to get that very clear. We need to have people understand why we have that crisis. We have the economic crisis for two reasons. President Mnangagwa, who is the president now, stole an electoral victory from President Nelson Chamisa. Uh, what that has done is that not a single Zimbabwean, because Zimbabweans voted in mass, not a single Zimbabwean believes that Mnangagwa is the president, that Mnangagwa won the election. As a result, not a single Zimbabwean is willing to spend a penny on anything in the country that relies on government. So when, 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 when the biggest problem is that uh, when this, the Mnanga government makes policy, the economy and the markets respond by running away simply because they do not believe in anything that this government can do. They do not believe it has any gravitas, it has any value to, 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 to actually uh, uh, invest in. And the second thing, is that uh, President uh, Mnangagwa's government certainly does not have uh, any uh, working policy around the economy and around governance. The one thing that they've been doing is they've been running what you'd call a propaganda government, a PR government. So everything they do is about PR. And when you run an economy, it's not a PR exercise. It's, a, it's, it's, it's thinking about the impact of what you're going to do on the rest of society and how people uh, behave. Look. To call what is happening in, in Zimbabwe an economic crisis 
is to make a mistake, is to misunderstand what it is. What is happening in Zimbabwe is a legitimacy and political crisis, where the lack of legitimacy leads to flight in terms of investment. This government has been borrowing from local uh, businesses, from local uh, uh, financiers. And even the local financiers don't seem to believe that you have a government you can trust, you have a government that can hold things together for a long time or that can honor its promises. It's already a government that promised the people of Zimbabwe that um, the ZANU-PF government promised people of Zimbabwe that the bond money that they were printing, they started printing two years ago and minting two years ago was going to always be equivalent to the US dollar and was going to be packed to the US dollar. And they have some assaulted on that and lied on that. So you, you, you have a problem where you have now a government that's not elected in the first instance and a government that's going back on its, on its, on its promises before. And if you double the, the, those two things, you have no other direction to take you are going into an economic crisis. It's a given. This economic crisis is entirely created by the Mnangagwa presidency and by the fact that uh, that presidency is illegitimate. Well, um, I'll just uh, rewind back your memories a little bit when you say, um, or reverse you to your statement when you said the Nangago government is not elected, um, which you and I will know that uh, I'm not here to defend them, but they're not here to defend themselves, so I would like to make that clear. Uh, Nangagwa was elected according to the world, each and everyone uh, saw the election. I'm not saying they won the election mm -hmm. or they didn't win. I'm not going to go into that. But uh, basically, Nangagwa was elected. And uh, for you to see, not a single Zimbabwean believes that, or believes the legitimacy, uh, legitimacy of the Nangaga government. How can you argue that when it's just two months <laughs> since the election? Uh, look, uh, uh, you don't have to, I don't, we don't have to defend that. If Zimbabweans believed that Mnangaga was legitimate, why would the shop owners close their shops immediately after a government has announced a monetary or, and, or financial policy? It's because they have no faith in the government that exists. Why would um, uh, Zimbabwe immediately have no foreign currency? It's because no one is, in, is willing to invest in that government. So even if you do not look at the... That's the problem with rigging elections. That's the problem with steering elections. It is that you cannot therefore rig the people's minds. The people continue to know how they voted and who they voted for. If you cheat like that, nobody wants to do business with you because they do not know whether or not you're going to keep your chip of the bargain. Now, let's, let's go back to the election uh, uh, issue that you, you, you refer to. The European Union that Mnangagwa invited to uh, uh, observe our elections uh, has concluded its, 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 its uh, observer mission report. And in that report, it is very clear, unequivocal about the fact that the results that were announced do not make sense and that uh, therefore there is a risk that they do not indicate or they do not represent the true will of the people of Zimbabwe. And the European Union uh, 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 did a great job, and there's no reason to think that, um, that the observer mission um, wasn't uh, truthful about that. The IRI and What about NDI, the African Union, your neighbors? The African Union, look. The or or I, SADC. The, the, the idea, yes, of course. The idea of, you, you have a club uh, in Africa, and, and, and if, you, if, you, if you ask that question, uh, 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 the problem you have is, is that you end up with the uh, you end up with the same question. It's, it's like saying, why is Africa? Why is all of Africa poor? Okay, all of no, Africa, the reason why I'm asking uh, this is because listen, you are citing the European Union. The European and, Union. Uh, many people will consider the European Union to be imperialist. You and I know that many people in Zimbabwe will regard them as, oh, why they are foreigners? Why should they meddle with our own the naivety, local problems? The naivety of that is, is that the European Union has a track record, proven track record of following democratic practices. Almost all the countries in Europe engage in democratic elections and have very legitimate governments. So you would know that the Europeans have some experience with democracy. Whereas your Sadiq friends, your, 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 your African friends, how many dictators do you have uh, over there? And they would like to keep some uh, resemblance of that. So you, when you compare which of the two has the experience of doing a better job, certainly the European Union has, uh, has, has a better job. But also that, look, 
uh, the observer mission in SADC is not, and, and such as is the observer mission in uh, in European Union, uh, uh, did not necessarily say that they didn't have problems with the election. They did have problems with the uh, with the election. Um, and you will realize, you will remember that even during the Mugabe era, Mnangagwa said Mugabe perhaps wasn't doing a great job. This SADC still sent its observers. And every time they said uh, uh, the, the election was, uh, was free and fair, you will be hard pressed to find where they find the election unfree and unfair. And that's an area that the region has to improve on. Uh, that's an area that the Africans uh, have to improve on. But, but let's, let's, let, let's, let, let's not go into that nitty gritty mm -hmm. uh, of how I to focus of, of on the, the politics. Now. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's focus on the economy. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on, on that because it's important. Uh, uh, the, the, the people in that country uh, will die and are Dying in droves because you need to have uh, 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 your medication in hospitals. You need to have basic commodities in the shops, and when those are not there, you have a serious crisis. People right now can go to hospital and get a prescription and go and buy the medication because they now need to produce foreign currency, and the U.S. dollar is not available in the coffers of the government, so it will not be available in the coffers of in in the, in, in the pockets of individuals in the country, and that crisis. It's deeper than anything else because it's one thing, my brother, to, 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 to not have money. It's an added problem to have money that comes from your reserve bank, but you can't buy medication. So you, you are trapped in a bad place that you think you've got money in the bank, you think you've, put, uh, uh, you've, you've prepared for a rainy day, you have your, uh, your, 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 your medical, uh, medical insurance, and you go to, 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 to the... A pharmacy and they say well we can't use your medical insurance so talking of uh, uh, the US foreign currency or foreign currency in the country um, recently the government uh, released around 40 million dollars to help tackle the issue um, do you think that 40 million dollar was enough or has that impacted on anything and uh, as a person who came recently from Zimbabwe from the country from Harare you will know what's happening so how is it impacting on local people like the people who cannot afford the the dollars as you you know the people who are like in the bottom line of 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 the country you see that is the embarrassment that you have a government somebody who calls themselves a government and they're going to release 40 million us dollars to the economy what's that is zimbabwe some small company that does cleaning somewhere that's what you need for viola here in sheffield to go clean and they will even tell us that they've raised that money. That's why I'm saying that it is a challenge when you have a government that is in the business of doing public relations instead of governing. The reason Mnangagwa is in the business of doing public relations and not governing is because he doesn't have, firstly, a governing philosophy, and secondly, doesn't have legitimacy, and is trying to buy everybody into, into, into believing that he is some governor of some sort. He is not running a government, he's running a show. And that's the problem. A government is a little more complex than uh, than, uh, than a show. And there's nobody watching this show. Everybody's running away from the Mnangagwa show um, uh, uh, to an extent that you have this problem. Look, when you're a government, you cannot solve your cash crisis by throwing peanuts at, at, at the economy. You need to overhaul your whole system. And in this case, throwing the small amounts of money at the economy is the problem. Because when people don't trust you, even the small amount you throw at them they don't return it to the bank. It doesn't go back. People get that money and they either hold it because they don't trust that tomorrow is going to, they think that tomorrow is another, is another cloudy day and they want, to, they want to do some savings or they want to keep some US dollars so that if they fall sick, they can buy their medication from the pharmacy. You understand? Mm -hmm. What they need to do is to understand, firstly, that they're not running a PR government, that they are illegitimate and that they need to create a sense of legitimacy. And secondly, go about creating that legitimacy and confidence, bringing confidence into the economy and into, into, into the government. Um, and they can only do that in, in one way, unfortunately, for them. Anything they do, I can tell you the truth, and I've started this, anything they do, the worst mistake that this government can do, the government can do, is announce a policy. The moment they announce a policy, they scare anyone. It doesn't matter how good that policy is. Because an illegitimate government cannot uh, bring about investment or confidence. So what they have to do is realize that they have just one way out. 
And that is to realize that the person, that President Chamisa, that they stole the election from, is the key. Mm -hmm. Mnangagwa comes into government and the country loses all its liquidity, becomes illiquid, loses its $17 billion economy. So it's minus $17 billion from the economy. And yet, if only you could have President Chamisa, if they would let him mm -hmm. run the country. Right. Go, go, go into your point, because uh, we've got less than 10 minutes. It's, it's, it's an important point. Mm -hmm. If they would let President Chamisa run the country, just by saying this minute, President Chamisa is now the president of Zimbabwe. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's dare to imagine. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen. This is how, this is the value. You will have more than half Zimbabweans who are in the diaspora flooding the international airport, mm -hmm. coming in with investment, with goodwill, with skills. Va value that at about 15 billion. That just comes into the economy instantly. And then you have the confidence because the people of Zimbabwe have elected President Chamisa. Well, that's hypothetically, though, isn't it? That's, you know, how, you, that's how you run economies. You project. Yes. You make projections about economies. You project. And mm -hmm. I'm projecting here how, how things would work. Okay, let's get and this. And we projected so, this. Let's get this No, 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 let's get, no. That's reality. You don't know what the economy is like until you've run it, until you've run a theory. Yeah, but you and I know that's not going to happen. Uh, they're not going to hand it back no, it's to not President Chamisa, as you called it. Because, because, look, because we, the, maybe nobody has told them. Yes. The fact of the matter is just by having President Chamisa become president, mm -hmm. your economy ticks up in value okay. Let's by talk, 15 okay. billion. Mm -hmm. And then you urge the foreign direct investment that will come as a result of having a, a government that can be believed to be legitimate. Mm -hmm. You throw in another 10 billion, so you have 25 billion worth in just one person, just President Chamisa being there. You have that potential in the economy, potential gain. Okay. And then talk about how the, local, the locals themselves are going to begin to see benefits from, in, from an increase in, 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 in confidence in the economy and in the government. You're talking about another 10 billion. So President Chamisa, as he sits there, he is about 50 or so billion worth of the Zimbabwean economy. He can do that over the next five years. Your economy can be, can, can, can be grown in just a very short space of time by making sure that you have an actually legitimate government, a government that your local businesses can mm -hmm. believe in, a government that the international community can believe in, a government that anybody can bank on. Right. What you've just mentioned here, as you and I will know, that's hypothetical. That's still debatable. And it's not possible for the ZANU-PF government to hand over to Mr. Chamisa. But let's talk about, try to see here, in terms no, no, of no, issue no. I, dis I disagree with you. In no, 2008, no, it's not, it's not, in it's 2000, not possible. we've done this before. You and I know it's we not have, possible. No, I don't they know that. I don't know that. Okay. In what about, 2009. What about, what about here? If they invite Chamisa f to an inclusive government, i.e. for them to work together. They can't do, the, the, uh, it, it doesn't. Do. It happened. Uh, Mugabe and, and Changirai did work together. Mugabe was the president, Changirai became the prime minister. It doesn't, it, it, that cannot happen. Let me tell you why it cannot why? happen. It cannot happen because one of the things you got out of that is, is that is what we have now. That because of the limitations of an inclusive government, you had ZANU-PF benefiting from the legitimacy that President uh, uh, Tsangarai brought into government, and then Mugabe using that period to then uh, uh, go back into his enclave with an improving economy, into his enclave, and create further uh, 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 um, uh, abuses in, in the political sphere. But it's not what Mugabe you that need, is What you anymore. need now. Of course, you have a more brutal government in 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 in, 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 in Mnangagwa's presidency. You have a government that will kill people. You see, this is what we, I say this to you, uh, Bailo, last year when when the military coup took place. I said I warned. We warned Zimbabweans. We said, look, this is a government of thugs and thieves that's taking over. It's a group of individuals who had been stealing from um, uh, from the state uh, and from uh, from uh, 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 the Congo. And, and committing serious crimes. And that, as a result of that, you needed to warn Zimbabweans not to trust what they're saying. So they killed people in November 2017. And then they lied about it. They said, we didn't kill any people during the coup. They did all these things. And now they believe mm -hmm. in lying over and over again. Mm -hmm. Now they killed people in August. A minimum of six people were killed in August. And they say we didn't kill them. They've created a commission. Okay. And people know that they're lying. Let's go a bit personal here, uh, which is about you. Um, I've seen on social media where you were accused of uh, 
trying to destabilize the country by announcing the result. That's an accusation. I just want to get a response from you, because there are a lot of people accusing you on Twitter, saying you are not allowed to announce results. They said you did, and you are one of those who was telling people to go out and protest. So that means those who were killed, you are partly responsible. So what's your take on it? Look, look we, we don't have to respond to all sort of nonsense that comes out of social media. That's absolute nonsense hogwash at but best. most of them are Zimbabweans. The people, yeah, they're Zimbabweans. Zimbabweans do speak of, Mnangagwa is Zimbabwean. Okay? And he does the things he does. The, he allows soldiers to kill people and then uh, set up a commission of inquiry. Let's be very clear about that. So uh, what I'm saying to you is this, uh, that uh, the people of Zimbabwe have a constitutional right to embark in public demonstrations. Definitely. And to then somehow criminalize the, em the embarkation or the calling of public demonstrations is wrong. But in fact, if you're also referring to the demonstration in which soldiers killed people, it wasn't called by anybody. It wasn't called by the president. It wasn't called by me. And you can, in any country, uh, uh, embark in a process of projecting what the election results are going to be. They project everywhere in the world. Yes, what but you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are declaring on Twitter that was, President Chamisa has won or Chamisa has won. Yes, that's what, that was our projection. That's what you do. How do you project? But you, you project that but, given... But certain result you are meant to wait for given, the electoral commission, that's, isn't that's, it? That's, you that's, announce results prior to that's, the... That's rubbish. Because the, P, the, the people know that only the Electoral Commission is officially announcing everybody else is making a projection. So that's, that's hogwash that uh, uh, those people are embarking on as a way to make sure that you have, uh, you have a limited uh, 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 access to, 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 to the truth and that only the, the regime can, uh, uh, can, can control information. What's wrong with making projections? How, 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 how does that affect any government? How does that uh, cause the soldiers to kill people? So that tells me you are denying the allegation. No problem. I'm not so um, less than two minutes for us to go. Um, now that we know the country, the economy right now is not good at all. And you are back now in the UK. So what would be like uh, your advice to fellow Zimbabweans who are in the diaspora? And uh, as it, it, right now, you know, what do you think should be the solution? Because we need a solution right now. You know, Zimbabwe. You know, you know, there's one thing. Zimbabwe can be run by uh, people like, uh, like, like, like President Nangagwa. Can be run by the former coast leg uh, cartel uh, of the uh, Congo DRC uh, fame. Can be run by these people who think that they can lie to the rest of the world and run this PR machine instead of a government. But Zimbabwe is largely made of uh, uh, well-educated people, and Zimbabweans in the diaspora are a good chunk of that. And they understand one thing. They understand that the government that runs them, that runs that country right now is illegitimate. And, uh, and, 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 and they are taking very seriously the message by President Nelson Chamisa today that um, what is now needed in the country is, uh, is that we should organize a transitional authority. And which, in the absence of a government, Zimbabwe doesn't have a government. What you have now is a PR machine that isn't a government. Because if it was a government, it would arrest the economic down, the, the downfall. If it was a government, it would bring confidence into the, into the economy. So it is a government that's governing the government offices and houses. So if you're talking about Munumtapa building, yes, there is people in there who are governing Munumtapa building, yes. But they are unable to govern even the streets around the building. They can't control what is being sold, what is available in the economy. In Arare alone, where the government sits, they control nothing, zero. All they control is the military, the army, and force and power. And I think that we've got to, we've got to, we've got to think about that. And President Nelson Chamisa says, we must give Zimbabwe a government. There is a void. And that government can only be established through a national transitional authority. And I think that that's the direction we should take, and Zimbabwe should be working towards that, because Mnangagwa cannot go on without an economy, and Zimbabwe can't survive without a government. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for tonight. Um, I would just like to point out that we tried to contact a member of the ZANU-PF uh, in around South Yorkshire to come to the show, but unfortunately, we couldn't get anyone from the ZANU-PF party to represent However, anyone who lives around South Yorkshire from the ZANU-PF, they are more than welcome to come and counteract what Mr. Sibanda has said. And to you, the viewers, thank you for watching. Until next week, you have a good night.